It's a shame. <laughs> L-E-T Aglet, don't forget it. Crisp break. It's really hard not to look at myself. I know. I'm obsessed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Sorry, it's fine. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Eleanor and I make YouTube videos talking about my life after being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I am joined today with my flatmate Lily Shires and Lily Shires. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought we'd make a little YouTube video talking about friendship and cancer and how to support a friend who has maybe had a diagnosis or is going through treatment. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought I've got like some kind of questions. I feel like thing. I should have done research, but there's no appropriate question I can put into Google for this. No. <laughs> to be fair, cancer research. Oh, I've got the egg. Did you ever get that? The egg. <coughs> Chocolate noise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chocolate. So, yeah, Cancer Research UK. We can keep this in. Is actually quite a good resource. They have a um, a forum where you can ask questions. Um, to people if you need help or advice so well, i think nice. I'll, I'll link that down below so why don't we start off with what is the right slash wrong thing to say right to someone let's start with the wrong okay <laughs> well i feel like i don't want to stick my leg in too much you know what i mean that's tip one. Oh, tip one is as close as you are to the said person you have no idea how it actually feels to be said person. Right, yeah. So as much as you're an, as you can empathise... Empathise? Mm. Yes, as much as you can empathise with them, it's not you in that situation. So just bear that in mind. So... In life, like in general. Like, maybe some, some phrases to avoid. Maybe things that are, like, insensitive. So, like, I know how you feel. Or, like... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like and the someone's... thing is, the thing is, is, like... <clears throat> Any nice human being, which I shockingly believe that you are, um, knows that it's coming from a good place. Yes. But sometimes it's just not helpful. Like, saying, oh, I know how you feel because, like, my dog's cat's boyfriend's goldfish once had... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's, as yeah. much as it's coming from... Because you're trying to empathise with that person and talk to them about it, it's not always helpful because you're yes. like, but do you know how I feel? Do you? So... One thing that I feel like I've had a lot is because I, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I don't need to have chemo and like the big scary, um, I don't know how big my hands are. Um, I don't need to have the big scary treatments. Mm. I mean, surgery, I guess is pretty scary, Yeah. but like, I don't, you know, it doesn't look like I have cancer. And so I think that's the thing, like it's like taking over your life in such a way, but seeing you like hopping down the street, you wouldn't know. Yeah. And I Completely. think that sometimes that can mean if you're friends with someone who like, maybe you don't see them all the time or whatever, which is obviously a completely normal thing. Yeah. It can be difficult to kind of gauge where, where the person is mm -hmm. and you can look well and not be well. And yeah, <laughs> it's, it, you know. Yeah. Like I think a lot of people say to me like, oh, you've got the good cancer, mm. like because it's got a high um, survival rate. And I suppose... Which don't yeah, get as wrong, great, grateful for. Yes. But it's still not fun. Uh, yeah, it's like, not, I, I still wouldn't choose... If I could choose to have this over not, I, I don't think I'd pick it. Would you rather? <laughs> thyroid cancer or... So, yes. So don't say like, oh, you've got the good cancer, so you might not be suffering yeah. as much. I mean, not that anyone's really going to say that. But, no. you know, I think it's just avoiding insensitive phrases. Also, um, I... I feel like I should disclose, I took this, I stole this video idea from, what's her name? Uh, Zoella? <laughs> no, <laughs> Olivia, um, I'll link her initial, uh, original video down below where she talked to her friend about having cancer. She had a different type of cancer to me. She actually had to go through chemo, but I just thought it was a really lovely video idea just to talk openly about friendship and cancer and she said in her video that she felt like she had to um kind of protect the people that she told and I completely agree with that like when I initially had to tell people about my diagnosis I felt like I had to be like don't worry I'm fine and yeah. I had to like almost make that like support them yeah. which I found I found really hard and to be fair I did distance myself I think she said this as well in her video I had to distance myself from those people that mm -hmm. I kind of felt like I had to protect because I was like, I don't have the energy yeah. to be helping you. Them get through it. Yeah, well. like, I know I think, that... 
<clears throat> it's different. I mean, it was different probably with me and probably with Fred's as well. Fred's mm. our other housemate, by the way. Um, because we were there all throughout the entire process and like we knew the first time you went to the doctors and it was a possibility and mm -hmm. like we knew that there was something like going on throat wise before it was a possibility so rather than just one day being like i've got no idea there's anything wrong with me the next day being like this yes. is a thing we were kind of like introduced to it at the same rate really that you were kind yeah, of completely. bit by bit it could be a thing it's this potential it's a thing so mm -hmm. It's kind of different when you're on that because it sounds bad, but sometimes the brain needs like I think for you as well probably if you had no idea that it was a possibility to do it all of a sudden it was like this is what you've got yeah you'd have been like sorry but there was a good couple of weeks wasn't there where yeah I think I had like, like I had quite a lot of tests done in the space of about two to three weeks and I think that helped because I was still living here and I was getting those mm -hmm. tests done wasn't I, I didn't go yeah. home my hospital was up in London I just thought there's no point going back down to Brighton so. Yeah, when I came home from the hospital, when I had my biopsy, so I was lying on the sofa and you were like talking yeah. me through. Yeah, so it didn't come as, as much of a shock. And, and I, I remember like, being at work and getting like the first text message and being like, and then I'm going back into the theatre watching a musical. Oh, I that's where I work. Because like, like, at work, anyone that works with me, we have like quite short breaks and then we just go and watch the rest of a musical. Um, <laughs> and so I'd like, sees message saying might have cancer goes and watches west end show <laughs> and i think it felt a bit off i but... never even thought of that because i was just in like absolute panic mode like i just i yeah, kind of just don't get me wrong, i was like, like giving you like a stream yeah. of like but I, i'm oh. glad you did do you know what i mean like i would rather you do that than not say anything mm. and just get home like i've got some bad news like, yeah but yeah i think for people that don't live with you or like people that you don't see as often it's probably a bit more of the thing that you were talking about about because it's a lot of information at once um, yeah whereas for me personally it was a mm. little bit of a different i i even remember like when i made i kind of made like a little instagram post just because it was such a major part of my life i mm -hmm. thought oh, god i better kind of let people know like yeah because yeah. i don't want to individually message everyone. i was gonna say and also it, that avoids the thing of like i've not seen this person in two months so how have you been oh well oh, by the way, i mean yeah it's, it's but i remember my yeah my dad saying um be careful like how you word it because yeah. it is shocking for people and i do understand that completely however if you act shocked and you know i think deal with it if you can personally or with your own circle of friends yeah. or a parent or someone don't lean on that person for that support put because, it back onto them kind of thing yeah because as much as you know i feel like you need to support each other i feel like if you're upset leaning on the person who's unwell is it's not, not it's yeah. not very helpful you i think I, my my suggestion yeah. was would be that you need to be as positive yeah. and encouraging as possible i think the thing is that you can understand why oh. people feel could understand why people would want to lean on you in a way because it's kind of a way of people showing their support in a funny roundabout yeah. way of like yeah. this is because being upset by the news is kind of that like I care about you thing like if if people weren't shocked by it they wouldn't mm. they don't care, do you know what I mean that kind of thing yeah so I think in a way like it, it can be a way of this has really shocked me I'm really upset for you because they're trying to say I'm here for you yeah if that makes sense mm -hmm. But then sometimes you've got to think if you've got like 40, 50 people all messaging you like, this is so shocking. How devastating. It's like, oh, my God, it really is devastating. Yeah, I <laughs> know, completely. Like, what would you say is like if you could give a tip to someone like, I don't really know what I'm saying. As like, in to <clears throat> like in terms it, of support. Like for someone who's in your position that you're in with me, like, um, what would you say? Because I feel like Lily has been fab like you haven't really tell me more about myself <laughs> no but like you haven't really like you've never said anything that's insensitive i feel like you've always been there for me like you've you've been so supportive 100 percent mm. um i think the it's difficult because i think the main thing is that everyone's different and everyone handles things differently which is why my main thing is probably gauge how that individual person I mean, I think I know you fairly well. So, like, do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's like, and again, saying, like, I kind of got to know the situation at the same stages that you did rather than all at once. But some people 
cope with things by really gathering that sympathy from people or some people feel really alienated if they get too much sympathy That's because true. you were the same person the day after your diagnosis as you were two days before it's just you you knew some do you know what I mean like yeah and it's like a lot of the time like you'd been ill for like quite a while like yeah and you just didn't know like yeah. she's exactly the same person as she was two days ago and I think sometimes that news because it is so like life-changing in a way can make people treat you differently which just doesn't Definitely. help because if you've had a massive health scare the last thing you need to feel is that your social life is also going down the pan alongside it because yeah that's just not helpful to anyone really i feel like from the minute like i was talking about it you still you and freddie yeah. still treated me like a like normal yeah. and i think that was so nice like we still like had a laugh yeah we i think that's the thing like that's like gauging, the world yeah like, the world that like, your life doesn't need to focus yeah. in on that all the time because yeah i just think i mean again everyone's different so some people might just want to focus on it and that be their soul kind of you know yeah but i think with us guys like we knew you wanted to still have a laugh and it not be like everything we talk about has to be that and everything we talk about has to be sad and we can't mm. laugh anymore because yeah you know what i mean like <laughs> it just makes a i don't know it's i think you can definitely like gauge as you said like gauge it off the person but mm. also like if you can ask like if, yeah if, how do you want me to yeah like you can just say like do you need space or yeah. do like what do you need me to do for you right now yeah and i think like don't be afraid to to say that because i think like the person who is going through treatment or the person who is unwell like will really appreciate yeah. you like i think definitely i mean i remember like one of my fairly close friends when i was quite young had cancer really but i was i mean i wasn't that young i was like 13 but i know then i was really like like scared almost to kind of ask her how she wanted yeah me to act because when you're that age it's like you kind of tip her around people and mm. conversation isn't as you know and i think Completely. that in a way for a short time kind of drove a little bit of a, a wedge between our friendship not that we weren't any less friends than we were but because i was kind of like felt like i was sort of walking on eggshells for no other fault than my own for not saying like what do you want mm. like where do you want me to be if yeah. you want me to like back off from it fine yeah if you want me to take to i don't know go out somewhere have fun have a laugh fine like i think i've like, definitely felt that like there are a few friends who i i can tell like they don't know how to mm -hmm. almost deal with it it's like they were like they obviously messaged me to check in but it's as if I do feel like there is a distance, yeah. which is fine. Like, I understand, like, it is an uncomfortable That's subject thing, matter. Yeah. Um, and again, like, it always comes... That kind of thing comes from good intention because essentially they don't want to upset you or yeah. offend you or stick their oar in, that kind of thing. So, like, this is the thing that the reason it's difficult is because it does genuinely all come, obviously, 90% of the time, from good intention. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think it's kind of thinking to yourself like how can i take this intention and also make it a positive experience for you as yeah. well as making myself feel better does that make sense yeah I no don't know. completely i think my biggest tip would just be just be open and transparent yeah. don't hide away thinking like oh if i don't address the problem or if i maybe just don't message them while they're going through the treatment yeah. because it's too hard yeah that's it can kind of drive a bridge between as yeah. well can't it? and i think i think the best way is just be open and honest and be like look i this is that you know mm. it's difficult and i know that you know the cancer does spread a wide net like it doesn't just affect the one person who has been diagnosed it yeah. affects everyone around them because it is upsetting it is sad and yeah. i think yeah and also this might be a separate tip but i don't know don't take silence or not hearing from the person as offensive yes. or upsetting because like i mean a lot of the time you've been really exhausted Mm. so don't be like oh god they hate me because she's not complying Definitely. it's not to do with you unless do you know what i mean like, that is so true it's, not, it's fine like, thank you for bringing that up that's all right like, I, you're I all very welcome i didn't write that down in my bullet points yeah because sometimes i feel like oh no I, i've got to check in or i feel i feel bad i mean i i know i just need to do what i need to do yeah, if i need sure. to sleep all day i need to do that and i think i knew that i had a supportive friendship group or like in lockdown when we didn't see each other like a good chat where yeah. if you didn't hear from me for a few days yeah, you'd be like oh yeah. you just know that i was just getting on with it and you can... and like the thing is is don't get me wrong if she's not talking for it i'll still spam her with messages like, <laughs> about all sorts of can i swear 
Or do you get no, demonetized? I, I can like put in like a funny noise. Okay. I mean, I don't get demonetized. So, I literally have like <laughs> five followers. I don't... <laughs> oh no, my followers. sponsor from... <laughs> my six <laughs> subscribers. Yeah. I mean, um, what I was going to say is, I still spam her with all sorts of <laughs> whether she wants it or not. But equally, I do that pre-cancer. Yes. And that's that's the very the very core of it all. Like, I think that's so important. Like still, like you can still send stupid shit. Like you can Oh, I just saw as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll do like I'll do like a funny quack. Like you can yeah, like still send and still talk about yeah. all of these things that you would do before. Yeah. Like and treat like, them like a normal person. I know you'd said to me a few times, like I wish like not specific people, but I wish XYZ would just be the normal mm. <laughs> and thank you coronavirus didn't help because everyone like we'd all gone home to various arse ends of the country and, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like, yeah so it's not like me and Fred are still living here and we were checking in on you like yeah, yeah. very different but i was gonna go off on a tangent about the other thing about lockdown and fomo and friends oh, and yeah, FOMO. Yeah, that, can i go into that yeah go into i that. don't know if this is directly related but my video can only be 15 minutes long, by the way. Well, we'll cut it down, it's fine. Well, to do a part one, part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting slowly drunker throughout the part. I'm so. going to say, I feel a bit tipsy. Yeah, do you want to top up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will not. It's only about five o'clock in the intermission. afternoon. Intermission. I am still a sovereign prince of Egypt. <laughs> sat there, like, <laughs> watching the seven plagues of the Bible. Oh with, my like, God. pyro and stuff. No, I'm that, that's good thank you so what i'm saying is we oh it's a bit i think i made it weaker oh it's all right we had a bit of a different situation because coronavirus yeah um in that everyone was in lockdown so although you were feeling decidedly worse than i was because i was in full health we were all just in our houses with our parents moping and our dogs <laughs> essentially for two months two months and a half months or something, something like that yeah so I mean, for me, I have no idea what it was like for you, but I am the queen, or used to be at least, the queen of FOMO, fear of missing out. So if I saw like a massive group of friends and doing this, that and the other, and I knew that I was incapable of going, or even in terms of professional life, work life, that's a massive thing a lot of the time of being removed from healthy life, really. Yeah. And <clears throat> unfortunately, coronavirus put a swift end to all of that. But it also meant that whilst you were sat in your house for two and a half months recovering, we were also all sat in our house for two and a half months. Completely, I agree. But in terms of if that wasn't a thing in your situation, somewhere through the screen, just keep the dialogue flowing. Like, keep talking to people. Say, oh, we did this today and don't feel the need to... I can't say pussyfoot, can I? Why? Is that... Why? Because I always thought it was a bit like... I thought it was like the Pink Panther. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was misogynistic, like women are like... Oh, oh, pussy for... oh. You I can't... always learn from Lily. <laughs> not, not truth, though. She's full, of, she's full of ball quack, because of me. <laughs> she, you can't tiptoe around people and kind of try and further remove them from the situation because if anything that just makes them feel more isolated Worse, completely so, and i wouldn't want everyone else's life to go on hold for the sake of me you know if you were like oh god we can't really do that because i don't want to make her feel bad, bad. Or, or like oh i don't want to tell her about this audition or i don't want to tell her about where we're mm. going again good intention but it does drive a further wedge between you and yeah your besons if you guys were to go out i don't know not that we can but if you were to yeah. go out to freedom tomorrow i probably <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but like I probably wouldn't go because of like yeah, I, yeah. I feel like low on energy and stuff. Yeah. But it's like I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out because I wouldn't have fun anyway. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know. But it's yeah, the kind I of think... thing that like again, like it's good intention, isn't it? People yeah. try and like shield you from, it is like shielding you from things. Yeah. Because they don't want to hurt your feelings. And again, good intention, but is the outcome necessarily positive? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think don't don't treat people differently really i think that's definitely that like, which is hard the, don't get me wrong video. i completely completely get like i was saying earlier like i used to be like that and mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. with you like one of the reasons that it's not been so much like that is because we do spend 23 hours and <laughs> 58 minutes a day yeah. either playing mario kart or <laughs> crisp so like <laughs> do you know what i mean it's yeah it's what it's very different thing when you don't see someone very often you don't really know how 
because from an outsider's point of view, they don't know how you've taken the news. Yes, that's Let so alone, true. like, are you like, okay, this is a thing, but I'll be fine? Or are you devastated? Are you a mix of the both? Like, and if mm. they don't know how you're taking something, they don't know then how to react themselves. Yeah. And again, it's all good intention, but just, yeah. I think, yeah, be honest, transparent. Uh, Can I eat crisps? Sorry. Yeah, let's have a crisp break. Um, so the next question, yeah. what can you physically do for someone? In terms of gesture wise, the thing I would say mostly, because I mean, don't get me wrong, I gave you the necklace and to, oh, the butterfly color, butterfly coloring book available yeah. on Amazon, link, link down below. below. And they had that. like life affirming quotes in it and stuff. It was lovely. But aside from that, my main thing would be like show up. Like if you're yes. saying I'm I'm here for you, like if you can, do, um, in the sense of like, I was in London the day you were in hospital and you said please come, so I did. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, it's it's just very very easy in all mm. aspects of life to say like to say things and to say I'm here for you, like I want to see you, I hope you're fine. But like sometimes you just need to get your bum there and be there for someone. I think it's the thing of like money in these situations oh, can only buy, buy so much like at the end of the day like you, you're not friends with people because they can buy you when you feel crap yeah. like you're friends with them for the the love and the support and the care and the laughs and yeah i think just think of why you're friends with that person and don't let that go just because they're poorly like Absolutely. they're still that person yes um, i completely agree am i allowed to look at your notes for like yeah cheating, yeah. cheating on a quiz no it's fine i had a question oh i just wanted to say like <clears throat> it's not really a question but just like a topic mm. um like understanding kind of your friend's boundaries for sure so when we went out shopping and stuff yeah the other day like like my shoulder as i've mentioned is giving falling off falling off <laughs> um slowly but but like you understand that like, if i say like i need i need to go back now yeah. you don't you never make me feel bad and say Ugh. oh god why are we but i want to go to <laughs> yeah it's like you, you're very yeah. sensitive to the fact that like i can't i don't have all the limits that yeah. i used to um, i ask you if you want me to carry your bag at least eight times a day yes you do like when we go yeah when we get a food shop you always like help me with my stuff you never just ask like because usually my instinct is to be like, no, I'm all right. Yeah. But like you just kind of grab stuff yeah. and we get on with it. I understand that chemotherapy can really like wear a person mm. down. Yeah. And I think if you're a friend of someone who's having chemotherapy, like just understand that like you might be able to see them, but maybe not for like a three hour chat on the sofa. Yeah. It might just be like a little 20 minute. And it would still mean as much to that person. Completely. Like, then, I don't know. In fact, it would probably mean more because they've not had to go through the thing of, oh, the hell, I'm exhausted. Like, yeah. I think just, uh, like, understanding that someone's limits, yeah, might be altered. and But mm. don't, like, wait for them to say it. Just be like, great, let's, like, move on. Yeah. Like, don't make them feel apologetic or bad for yeah. that. Right, well, I think we've answered all the questions. Many questions. Thank you very much, Lily, for being in my video. You're most welcome. Um, what we're essentially going to do now is... Probably play Mario Kart. Probably, yeah, Mario Kart and Jim. <laughs> right. Thank you. Bye. Please subscribe. Bye.